lot of guys that I know have this kind of ego trip thing about it, right? And and I don't know about you, but when I'm when I'm sitting where you're sitting and the instructors are, I know everything and you don't know nothing. It kind of ticks me off. I'm an adult, you know. You might know more about me on this subject, but let's talk about something else, you know. And so I put it up there, kind of remind me that we're all professionals in here. I'm not the only one in the room professional enough to do, you know. I mean, we all are, right? So it kind of keeps me with with you know, a little bit with the ego. And also for gun stuff, what did the guy do wrong? Didn't check the button. Yeah, it, well, he was he cleared it, but he didn't follow the stuff in the proper order. You know, when he took his Glock, he pulled the slide back, right? Which cleared the, the chamber, picked it right up the chamber. And then he sent the slide home, and then he took the magazine out. So what did he do? He reloaded the gun, right? He did all the right stuff, he just did it in the wrong order. So he got careless. And we're going to talk about causes of accidents, so you're going to get up here and talk about causes of accidents and ignorance and carelessness. He knew what to do, he just forgot to do it because he was too busy talking about how cool he was. And as, you know, we're not doing carry permit stuff, but as far as I carry permit stuff, it also illustrates some things that, uh, that I think is interesting. Number one, here is he shot himself. And how many people have been trained, oh, you know, oh, you got shot, you die, right? He shot himself and he's walking around. You know, he shot himself in the, in the thigh. And, and you got to give the guy credit. If I stand in front of somebody and shoot myself in the leg, class is over, it's done. I'm, I'm going to curl up in a ball and cry. You know, but, but it didn't knock him down, it didn't knock him over the wall. You know, and, and I hear that a lot. The goal of this class, and you will see this again and again and again and again. The NRA has what they call KSAs. Knowledge, skills, and attitudes. I've talked to all of you, either through email or on the phone, to make sure that y'all had the proper knowledge and proper skills to make it through this class. You know, you've all been shooting, you know, longer than I have, mostly. You know, a long time. And an and attitude. You know, I had a guy call me last night one in the class, and I'm kind of talking to the guy and telling him that I'm full because he had kind of a crazy attitude, you know? You have the right as an instructor not to have somebody sit in your class if you think he's going to turn into the next dead gum, you know, crazy person, right? We don't want to certify nut jobs. Uh, and that's not an NRA term, that's, that's a term that I have. Uh, but uh, you've got to make sure that, that as instructors, you've got the proper knowledge, the proper skills, the proper attitudes in order to teach basic students. This is a basic class. They don't. You know, the, the NRA doesn't distinct, differentiate between the weaver and the isosceles stances. They just say the two-handed pistol shooting position. And the NRA has some specific rules of how they operate. Like, when you go to the range for a basic class, you don't use humanoid targets. You use bullseye targets, right? There's not anything wrong with using humanoid targets in other classes, but for a basic class, you may have someone who has no desire whatsoever to do any self-defense stuff. They just want to target shoot a 22 at, at bullseye targets, right? Or you may have someone who's coming from an anti-gun background, right? And you want to get them the fundamentals to shoot and let it become enjoyable without putting, because there's a whole nother set of, of mindset to self-defense stuff. So they're trying to separate that out. There are some self-defense classes the NRA teaches, but this one's not one of them. They don't like you to use the word, or they don't, you, you can't use the word weapon, right? It's always firearm or gun or handgun or pistol. So in this, in this class, this first six hours, it's, it's set up. First thing off the bat, we're gonna, we're gonna have an exercise. Then we're gonna talk about how the program works and how you fit into the program. How to use a team. My team's in the back. She keeps me straight with stuff, uh, and she'll wave her hand and, and, and point at stuff and make me, uh, you know, take things back that I shouldn't have said or, or not forget things. Training materials, training aids, how to get them, how to use them, which ones work, which ones don't. How to organize your course, uh, you know, cost-wise and, and, and other ways, and then get ready to teach this course. So basically, this class 
is generic towards the NRA program. And once you've got this, I've, as we've talked, uh, it's the same for every class. You won't ever have to take this class again. If you want to be a rifle or a shotgun or a personal protection instructor, once you've got this basic certificate, you can just go take the instructor portion. Right? That's why the NRA did it. That way they don't have to do this every class. So it's pretty smart. All right, some rules. So I see there's a lot of range bags. Y'all brought some firearms. Anybody bring any bullets? All right. And that's cool, and I trust you. However, trust but verify. So, the way that they work, whenever you have a, a, a handgun in the class or a firearm of any type, and you want to introduce it into the classroom, what you'll always do, and we'll keep the magazines out separate, but you'll have a student verify that it's empty, and then you verify, and then you have a student verify. Right? And you do that every time you pick a firearm up, okay? Now, you know, it's kind of redundant, but we want to build in, you know, we want to build in that safety factor above all. And we'll say that's downrange. So you're shooting, right? And, and bang, 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 and then you got to click, so you think you've got a hang fire or whatever, you, your gun's you know, smoking or whatever, and you've got a problem. So what do you, so what do, you do? Raise your hand. So you, I come up. Now, I'm not, he's got the gun, and I don't want to just come up on him and, and touch him, especially if, he's, if he was a girl. Uh, and so I always just come up, put my hand on him, and say, hey, what's your problem? Okay, so I let him know what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach around and get the gun. And if I, if I come over from this direction, right, and then I say, I got it, he lets go, and he sits back, and then I can come in and mess with the gun, right? If, if I come from this side, and he's got his finger on the trigger, and I go to pull it, you know, it could call it, you know, it could, you know, the Hawaii keto thing, whatever. He, he could get his finger caught in there and make the gun go off. And if I come from this direction, it's really easy, he just steps away. But you want to, when you, get a, when you get a grip on the gun, you want to tell them what you're doing, and then you want to tell them, you know, I've got it, and you step back, right? And that's just a good, easy way of, of taking the gun from them. But I always make sure that I let them know that I'm there before, you know, I start talking to them so they don't, you know, turn around with a gun or whatever. Make sense? Cool. Thank you. All right, who's got two? Now we're going to give you a break this morning. This class we're going to do first is, is the basic pistol shooting instructional method. You're lucky this one's kind of a lecture for a little while, about you know 20 slides or so, uh, just to kind of get your juices flowing before we get you up. Um, even though after that, the next five lessons or so are all just like the one we ended on yesterday. Here's the lesson. Here's how it breaks down. Y'all get up and teach it. Right? Then the last one will be talking about how you do your student exam, and then we'll take the exam. So, objectives for this one is, you know, if you're saying, okay, we're going to do the two hand standing, we want you to get up, shoulder width apart, put your little hands out. Why would you have them do that without putting a gun in your hand? Kind of like <clears throat> crawl, walk, run. Yeah. Because they're, because you're talking about basic students who might never have had a gun before, and now you're finally going to put it out there, you know, <clears throat> I got a gun, and then they, they, they're so interested in the gun. In some of my radiation defense classes, uh, I'll go in and I'll lay out all the, the dosimeters and stuff on the table, and all the little chargers and all the little stuff that lit, lights up and clicks. I'll just leave it, in, and then they'll come in, and I'll, and I'll just sit and watch them play with it for a second, and then once they get it out of their system, then I'll talk about it. Because if I talk about it and stuff's laying there, they want to play with it in, instead of hearing me say what it does, right? So if you if you don't introduce the gun until they get the position there, then they're gonna have then they're gonna be concentrating on the position rather than ooh look I have a pistol. Like I said, your mileage might may vary. You can you can you can use this or you can take it away because it's not you know in your in your lesson plans. But as an instructor. 
I kind of have a pet peeve, or, or I can kind of tell the quality of an instructor if he if he has the students apply that Kentucky windage and chase that bullseye, right? If an instructor has a student and he's teaching shooting and they're shooting off, and I think I mentioned this before, if they're shooting off to the left, low left, or or whatever, and, and the instructor says, okay, you're shooting low to the left, so why don't you aim high to the right? So I can tell that instructor either is lazy or doesn't know what they're talking about, right? Because that Kentucky windage, if I aim off whatever, that works really good if you're shooting at a known distance, at a non-static, you know, or a static, non-moving target that's just a big piece of paper that doesn't move, right? Because you can, you can kind of see, okay, I'm aiming over here, and so I'm hitting over here, you know, on a big white piece of paper. But if you do any kind of, if anything ever moves or, or it's not a big piece of paper, then that doesn't work. And you're, you're teaching them basically to make the mistake and then, you know, solve it by making another mistake. It's a lot easier as an instructor, a lot better if you, you know, get them to shoot a consistent group and then using that handout that I gave you, that Octan Era analysis chart, if they've got a group and it's in a certain spot, then they're consistently making the same mistake. That chart helps you identify it so then you can correct that mistake and make them. And you're All right, this part of the um, lesson is, a, is um, basically I want to share with you some information about uh, some kudos that you can earn and some things that you can earn for yourself. Everybody likes trophies and merit badges, and uh, the uh, basic shooting sports are uh, no exception. Uh, the, the NRA itself has partnered with Winchester, and they have a very interesting uh, self-study program uh, and self-achievement and self-qualification marksman program that you can get involved with in your basic uh, student handout. You'll find one of these booklets, and it's very interesting. Um, you don't have to do this as, as a part of a formal course. This is actually something that you can do on your own. It goes by the buddy system or honor system, at least for lower level uh, accomplishments. And basically you can follow the instructions. You can do a shooting exercise at a standardized and pre-specified distance at standardized targets, which you can buy from a list of target manufacturers.